Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today we're talking about Maryland real estate here in 2022. Um, and things are definitely a, a little different than they were a year ago, even six to nine months ago. Um, so we're gonna talk about some of those changes, some things that you can expect um, here in the Maryland market if you are considering becoming a homeowner here in Maryland. And let's get started right now. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Living in Maryland channel where we talk about all things living here in the great state of Maryland. So if that's the kind of information that you are looking for, then you are definitely in the right spot. And if you are thinking about moving here to the state of Maryland, if you're wondering whether becoming a homeowner may be the right decision for you and your family, we absolutely love helping out in any way possible with making that transition here to the state of Maryland. However you feel most comfortable reaching out with us by phone, email, or text, uh, please feel free to reach out anytime in days, nights, and weekends. We've got your back when moving here to the great state of Maryland. All right, first I wanted to start off with just a general market update and give you an idea of what to expect um, in the real estate market right now if this is something that you're considering. So um, first and foremost, it's becoming less and less of an auction style um, environment here in the Maryland real estate market. And I think people are seeing that kind of across the country. There's still some markets that are pretty uh, white hot, but Maryland is definitely starting to settle down. And I think um, largely in part to interest rates, it's hard with such a large um, you know, market um, with so many people buying and selling and, and figuring out exactly what's impacting each and every one of those uh, situations. But um, I think that's a, a major part of it. So today we're approaching um, end of July here in 2022 and interest rates are sitting uh, close to 6%. And uh, at the first of the year, they were probably right around 3%. So doubling in over a little over six months is is a pretty um, substantial increase. So it's definitely gonna have an impact on the marketplace. Um, so that's you know definitely um, a major factor. Now, um, in regards to it being less of an auction, um, you know we're seeing less and less buyers having to give up a lot of those contingencies versus a year ago where we were just seeing um, you know 10 plus offers on uh, move-in ready homes hitting the market. So we're seeing less and less of that. If the home is priced, um, right, or if it's priced really well, you still might see that home sell in the first uh, weekend with a few offers. Um, but it's also not uncommon right now to be looking up and pulling up homes and seeing homes 20, 30, 35 days on the market. So um, it's definitely changing. It's interesting um, kind of paying attention to stuff um, around my house. There was um, one home in particular went on the market about a month ago. Um, and they had put in the agent notes, you know, expecting multiple offers. We'll be reviewing um, Tuesday at noon. Um, and that day came and went about 30 days ago. And now they've uh, done a $20,000 price reduction um, about a week ago. So, and it still hasn't sold. So uh, pricing is becoming extremely, extremely important. Um, I would imagine there's still a decent amount of sellers out there that are kind of living in the auction type market from six to 12 months ago. So um, things are definitely changing. It's just kind of cooling down. We're not really seeing, um, you know, mega deals or anything like that. It's just um, less and less of that auction and massive bidding above appraisal and all that kind of stuff. Now we're still sitting at about one month of inventory. So that's kind of the absorption rate that we uh, pay attention to in real estate. So um, it's still, you know, pretty solidly a seller's market from anywhere from zero to about three months of inventory, um, which is telling you exactly how long, if no new homes came onto the market, exactly how long it would be before those homes sold and were, uh, you know, there was no more available. So that's kind of the absorption rate or the inventory rate that we kind of pay attention to. So we're still sitting at roughly one month in Maryland. So um, still, you know, very few homes on the market. Um, however, pricing is just becoming more and more important because there's also that demand at the same time is kind of just starting to level off and kind of lessen um, due to the interest rate environment. So um, kind of paying attention to days on market and just kind of seeing what that looks like because as a buyer, if you start seeing homes um, approaching the 10 to 15 um, day on market number, uh, a price reduction is very likely coming if that home doesn't sell uh, pretty quickly within that, that time frame. So um, we're starting to see more of that um, if sellers are not pricing right, if they're being too aggressive um, and just kind of, you know, thinking that their, their home is worth more than it actually is. So kind of paying attention to that days on market um, is really a true indicator of kind of maybe what's forthcoming um, with that home. So if it doesn't sell in that first, uh, you know, two weeks, then 
uh, there's a good chance that that price tag's probably coming down 10 to 15 grand. And all of this is just leading to a more and more normalized market, which is awesome to see. The last two to two and a half years have just um, really been not very normal with buyers waiving various contingencies, um, the excessive bidding and things of that nature. So um, it is nice to see things getting um, a little bit back to normal. Now, with that said, we're, we are seeing um, more and more sellers being open to contingencies, uh, specifically home sale contingencies. So if that's something that um, is going to be you know, in your situation um, with purchasing a home here in Maryland, um, definitely reach out and um, you know, talk to someone about that. You can always reach out to me and we can discuss that as well. Um, we're seeing a lot more sellers being open to that because homes are sitting longer um, and there's not 10 offers in one weekend. Um, sellers are not going to be able to just you know, pick the, you know, this crazy offer that's basically stripped down of everything. So um, if you are in need to sell a home in order to buy a home, that's something that's um, definitely possible these days. So um, definitely look into that and don't be afraid or, uh, or let that scare you off from the market if that's your situation. Another thing that we did not see at all in the last couple of years is seller help. So basically what this is, is the seller crediting the buyer money for um, really anything, repairs, um, offsetting their closing costs. It can really be used by the buyer for anything except um, their down payment. So we're not seeing a ton of this yet, but we are starting to see this come back. Um, for certain properties in certain areas. So this is cool. If, the, if you're looking at a property that's been on the market two to four weeks and it's got no offers, um, maybe uh, getting the seller to give you some sort of credit. Uh, FHA allows up to 6% of the sales price. Um, conventional up to 10% down allows 3% of the sales price and conventional over 10% down allows up to 6% of the sales price. And for the VA loans allows up to 6% of the sales price. So on a $200,000 loan amount, that's gonna be 12 grand that you can get from the seller. Um, and then of course, as that uh, purchase price goes up, um, that's just gonna increase. Now, um, a cool thing, if you're a buyer who you've been watching the market and you've been saving up money for your own closing costs, that's awesome. Um, well, then maybe we can ask the seller for a credit to maybe buy down your rate and get that payment down to a more uh, comfortable level. Um, if you are using a conventional loan and you're putting less than 20% down, um, maybe looking at options of buying out the mortgage insurance or doing something in regards to that because that's also going to bring the loan down. So uh, PMI, private mortgage insurance, on FHA is 0.85% uh, of the loan amount. And that's for the life of the loan. There's no buyout options. Um, so, you know, there's really not much you can do there. But for conventional... Um, on average, it's about half, um, if you have strong credit, it's about half the cost of FHA is kind of what I've seen lenders shop um, and have different uh, mortgage insurance companies that they purchase that stuff from. So it's hard for me to give you an exact figure or an exact calculation, um, but just kind of know that that's how it works. But conventional has a ton of options. So if you're able to go conventional, one, it's going to save you the upfront mortgage insurance. FHA charges you 1.75% um, of the loan amount and rolls it into your loan. No questions asked, can't do anything about it. Conventional does not have that. So you're gonna save that going conventional. And then Emma, um, conventional gives you various options with mortgage insurance to either buy it out, um, to pay it monthly, to roll it into the rate. Um, so you have you know various things like that. So maybe getting creative if um, you're looking at homes that you wanna look at, you know, and the payments are just too high. Maybe think considering getting a seller credit to do something with buying down the rate, uh, paying um, uh, or paying uh, out or buying out the mortgage insurance to lessen your payment that way um, are options that just didn't exist six or 12 months ago because it was impossible to get a seller credit. Now, just to give you a quick example of PMI on FHA, I mentioned it's 0.85% of the loan amount. So using a $400,000 loan amount as an example, that's gonna be $3,400 a year, which is gonna come out to $283 a month. So you can kind of see um, that's a, a decent chunk of change and that's really not any value to the borrower. It's really just an insurance policy to protect the bank against a potential borrower default. Um, and then conventional, as I mentioned, there's no exact um, you know, perfect calculation for it because it's gonna vary lender to lender based on what um, MI or mortgage insurance company they purchase it from. 
But if uh, you have strong credit, hopefully that's about half. So you can expect that to be 140 to 145 a month. Um, so definitely something worth looking into because that is a, you know, a significant cost within um, and wrapped into your mortgage. So keeping that top of mind um, and knowing that that's actually an option today is, is pretty cool. So it's definitely something to look into. Okay, next is going to be um, pay attention and be aware of uh, increasing property taxes. So the last couple of years, we've seen uh, lots of appreciation, um, you know, so it kind of makes sense that the counties are gonna, you know, make sure that they get their, their taxes in regards to that um, increase in uh, market value of properties. So um, I've been seeing a lot of properties where our tax bills in Maryland just came out July 1. So this is very recent and a lot of the websites are not really pulling that um, data this quickly. So definitely something to keep an eye out and ask uh, about if you are seriously uh, considering purchasing a home. So a lot of the properties that I've been seeing in the four to $600,000 range, um, the annual property taxes are increasing anywhere from 200 to $500 a year. So definitely something to be aware of. Um, now, when you're looking at, even on my realtor MLS, it's not always accurate. It does not um, really factor in one, the most recent current bill. And then it also factors in um, if that seller is getting a credit. So if they're like a, a veteran, disabled veteran, and they're getting a, a, you know, some sort of credit on their property taxes, if they're getting a homestead credit um, or anything like that through the state, it's going to reflect that in the tax uh, property taxes that are showing on a, a home uh, sale website. But when you go directly to the county website, you can pull that stuff and it'll show you exactly what the total uh, property tax bill is before seller credits because you, you may not get um, a credit that the existing owner is getting and that's something you want to be aware of because when you go under contract the lender is going to pull that property tax bill directly from the county and then they're going to tell you oh it's more than what you were told and that's something we want to try to avoid so making sure one you see exactly what the new current bill is because property taxes are going up due to market appreciation, and then making sure the current owner is not getting a credit that you won't qualify for so you know the true uh, property taxes that you're walking into. Um, we also see some city credits here throughout Maryland. So, you, you know, you got Tacoma Park, um, you've got uh, the city of Frederick that have um, city taxes. Um, the nearest to me, uh, proximity-wise, is Columbia. So this is something that I pay attention to a lot. It's got a city-wide tax for almost all of Columbia. Um, and it's tied to the assessed value. So it as well um, is going up. So just something to pay attention to because that stuff may not be reflected um, in the websites that you're looking at because it's so recent. Um, and Columbia Tax, I can speak to specifically, it comes out um, July 1 as well. So these things are just coming out and it's something you wanna pay attention to. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Hope you learned something new today. If you ever need anything at all, please feel free to reach out and we'll see you at the next video.